Welcome back. So moving forward in this lecture, I'm going to demonstrate how to request an instance because in the previous lecture, I demonstrated how to log in using your service ID. So once you're logged in, all you need to do is navigate to developer.servicenow.com URL or just search for it and you'll be at this page. And if you're already logged in with your ServiceNow ID, you wouldn't have to log in again. But if not, you can certainly log in as well. So once you're on this page, on the developer.servicenow page, there's an option called Request Instance. So if you already have an instance, perfect. If you do not, then this is what you need to do. Just simply click on Request Instance, and it will ask you and give you an option of choosing your release. The latest release, like I mentioned, is the Utah release. The previous one was Tokyo and then San Diego. And I've created another section, a complete new section, on how to upgrade from San Diego to Tokyo and then from Tokyo to the latest release, which is the Utah version. So once you're here, just simply choose this particular Utah release and then click on Request. And what this is going to do is it's going to you know, process your requests. And sometimes it takes a few seconds and sometimes it takes a few hours depending upon the backlog of requests being made to the ServiceNow platform. So right now we're in the process of setting up or ServiceNow is in the process of setting up an instance. Perfect. So once the instance is ready, you will get this pop up saying your instance is ready. And here is the URL for your ServiceNow instance. And again, this is the admin version right so you will have the username as being admin right here and then of course it gives you the password as well so make sure you save the url as well as the credentials so once you're here let me go ahead and save this so i can log in once i open up the instance as well so i'm going to go ahead and click on open instance and what this is going to do it is going to bring me the actual dashboard of ServiceNow with the latest version which is the utah release Great, so it gives you a pop-up saying enable analytics. So just simply read to this and here you are. So you're in the App Engine Studio where you'll have your own workspaces. You're logged in as the admin, right? As the admin user because you requested the Utah instance. And if you navigate, just scroll down, you can open up the Studio IDE or you can open up the Floor Designer. You can open up the Mobile Studio or open up the UI Builder as well. All right, perfect. So once you're logged in as a developer or onto your Utah developer instance, you'll notice that there's a menu option called All, right? This is where you will find all of the options or the dashboards or whatever it is as the administrator that you need to do. For example, there's a whole list. Okay, so just navigate through the list, but it's really easy to find what you need to do. For example, let me go ahead and demonstrate how to create a new user. So just navigate to Filter and just type in user administration right so what you'll find is the option where you'll find under the user admin role attributes users groups roles so everything that needs to do with the users right so i'm going to go ahead and click on users for example and it will navigate me to this particular page where there's a button called new so just click new and perfect so just fill in the user id the first name last name and all of the details for this new user and then submit and this is going to go ahead and create a new user within the ServiceNow platform so it's really easy if you need to navigate back and i'm not going to go ahead and do this this is your homework so go ahead create your user id and give it a first name give it a last name title department and then of course options right you can put some constraints like password needs reset you can locked out web service access only or internal integration user given an email outlook and just standard information regarding this new user so if you need to go back you'll notice there's a back arrow and then here are the existing users so if i were to let's say pick any of these sample users for example let's click on the first one you'll notice it has all of the details right regarding this particular user now you can update the records here for example you can set a new password or you can delete the user here as well there's a three ellipses option here you can toggle template bar and toggle annotations on and off right you can also add tags which i'm going to get later into what those are and how helpful they are all right so you can also have attachments by the way uh, for this particular user and you can add attachments 
uh, for this user. So if there's some documents, some personal records, or whatever it is, you can actually have a record of those for each user as well. Perfect. So I hope this helps. Let me go back one more time. And then the all tab or all option here on the menu bar is perfect, right? So we're in the user admin, right? You can also click on groups, you can roles, logged in users, you can take a look at active uh, transactions, departments, locations, and so forth. So for example, if I were to click on groups, it will take me to the page where I have the names, the descriptions, the active, who's managing it, who's the parent and when it was updated, right? This is all in Utah version. And that's really the, the dashboard or the navigation or the UI is changed, right? So it's kind of keep on changing and evolving from the San Diego version or the Madrid version, which you'll be later seeing in this course because we're using the Madrid version, which is the older version, but the fundamentals are the same, okay? Um, it doesn't make any difference. While well, a little bit of change, which I'm going to demonstrate, and I'm going to be changing and providing more lectures on the latest versions as well. But just so you know that the fundamentals are the same, the concepts are the same, the applications is the same. It's just the UI, the navigation is a bit different and each version has its own versions. And I'm going to give you the resource list in the resource section where you can see what's new in the Utah version, right? And then you can take a look at uh, what's new in the previous version, which was Tokyo. And then if you go back, San Diego and so on. Okay. All right. So I hope this helps. This is how you log into your dev instance. And then of course, menu bar option all here is you can navigate to whichever area you wish to go and then take a look at you can go to the employee center you can go to the service catalog for example you can view incidents manage them and there's knowledge articles and so forth so whichever uh, lecture you're working on uh, moving forward you will be finding all of these options right here within this particular menu and it's an extensive menu they put everything in one place so you don't have to go uh, here and there it's everything here just filter out what you're looking for for example, the product catalog, you can take a look at the categories, all models, and so on, right? So each option here has um, a drop down where you can take a look at what you're looking to do and how do you want to manage, right? Whether it's inventory, contract, cost, employee profile, and so on. So I hope this helps. Practice with it. If you need to navigate to your user ID right here, you will see that you will have several options regarding your instance. For example, it'll show you the details such as it's the Utah release. The user role is admin, the app engine studio is installed, and you can of course start building apps if you need to. Whereas the instance action under here, you can see active plugin and several change user role, release instance, and so forth, right? And of course, keep in mind, this is very important that instances with no activity for over 10 days will be claimed back into the pool. So what you need to do is either regularly work on your instances or you'll have to create a new instance if 10 days have passed. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions with this. Let's move to the next lesson.